Hey guys, welcome! So, after a month long hiatus from YouTube, I'm finally back. Uh, if you've been following me on Instagram uh, or you're in my private Facebook group, then you already know I've been on a whole adventure for the last month. Uh, I'm finally back. I'm really excited. I have a lot of content to make. And uh, we're starting off with a new moon pick a card. Things are slightly different today though. Uh, I am, as of today, launching my Patreon, which I've been talking about doing for months and just haven't done it. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do extended readings. If the pile you chose really, really resonates with you and you want kind of an extension on it, then I'm going to have extended bits for my um, Patreon members. There are three different tiers. One is going to include the monthly book club, which uh, has a live chat each month where we discuss the book together. And the second tier is going to have extended content like pick a card readings um, and behind the scenes stuff. And then the third tier uh, we'll have voting rights for content as well as um, like vlogging, some behind the scenes vlogging. So um, if the pile you chose really resonates with you and you want to see more of it, then Patreon will have additional extensions on it. That being said, um, the other thing that's different this month is instead of having like three items, I felt like having three cards. So these are the Beyond Lemuria Pocket Edition cards. I'll show you close-ups right now. Um, there, each one of these has a message on the back, so whichever pile you chose, whichever pile you choose, the end of the reading will include the message on the back of this card um, for each person. So, take a moment and look at the cards, which one resonates with you, don't overthink it, just let your intuition guide you, whichever one feels right is the one that you should go with, and then uh, check below and in the description for timestamps, and then let's get into your reading, shall we? If you chose this card, pile one, this will be your reading. Okay, pile one. So the general overall that I initially see is you have been working really, really dil diligently or perhaps distracting yourself. You've been working really hard on honing a skill, working on creating something, working on um, being, honing your professional skills or uh, artistic skill or something that could potentially bring you money or something that you're passionate about. You've been working really, really hard on it. Dedicated, you've been dedicating yourself to it, but a lot of that dedication is a mechanism to try to drown out this pain that you have, something that you've lost, and um, you're 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 working both not just on the thing that you're distracting yourself with, but you're also in the process of doing that, working towards getting over this loss. Um, and the the primary message with that is that there are things here that you have failed to realize you still have in this loss. Um, there's, a, you, there's a period of isolation where you are being asked to look within yourself, to guide yourself, to find a light within you, um, and you're having a hard time with that. You, you're looking towards work, you're looking towards keeping yourself busy instead of looking within you where the answers are. There is an intuition that you're ignoring uh, about a choice. You have a choice. Sorry, my camera died for a second there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh, yes. You have a choice, and uh, your intuition has been guiding you towards this, that there's a choice that you're ignoring or that you're refusing to see, and the answer is within you, uh, but you've been distracting yourself instead of uh, really listening to that guidance. There is an inevitable collapse that you know, <laughs> you know it's coming. You've been seeing it come for a very long time. You're very aware of it. And um, that collapse, while you have been apprehensive about it and concerned, is actually gonna bring you so much clarity um, about what is true. And I think for the majority of you, this is gonna be about romance. What I'm reading here is we have the we have the Eight of Pentacles, which is about dedication of effort, which is being clarified by the reverse Five of Cups. We then have the Hermit, who's being clarified by the reverse High Priestess and the Lovers. The Tower in reverse, clarified by the Ace of Swords. This is the dedication um, in, in, in the face of this tremendous loss and the requirement by the universe asking you to go within 
um, to deal with your your blocked intuition regarding these really important choices, which could be about romance because it's the lover's card. But the lover's card, in essence, is Gemini energy. It's duality. It's choices. It can be romance. It doesn't have to be, though. Um, in this particular instance, it, it, for some of you, I think it is. For a lot of you, I think it is. But it's about a choice. Then we have the tower in reverse, which I often read as... The tower is a collapse of something that needs to go, but when it's reversed, I oftentimes feel that it's a collapse you know is coming. Uh, the tower traditionally is a very sudden, unexpected collapse, but when it's reversed, I feel like it's, you know it's coming, or it can just worse. Uh, but I think it's you knew it was coming. Being clarified by the Ace of Swords, which is new, profound clarity. And then the very last two cards here is the Four of Wands, clarified by the Two of Cups. Now, if you've seen my video on Twin Flames, then you know how I feel about the subject. That being said, and if you don't and you're really about it, go watch it. That being said, this is traditionally kind of a twin flame card. It's a celebration card. It's a, It's got the uh, balance and harmony and happiness in home. And that's being clarified by the Two of Cups, which is traditionally kind of a new romance, new love, new whatever. It's a soulmate kind of card. So I think for a lot of you, this is a, a matter of love. Um, and this is pertaining to this upcoming um, new moon, new moon in Virgo. I'm going to clarify this batch real quick with some additional cards, but that's the initial that I'm coming off. Um, I'm going to clarify these and then I'm going to um, oh, and the bottom of your deck was strength in reverse, and I also just pulled strength out in this one as well, in the sun. Um, after I pull these clarifiers, I'm going to start playing oracle cards. Oh, okay. Well, there's the lovers again. <laughs> this uh, clarification is thus far pretty much all... Major Arcana, and then we have an Ace of Wands, and a Three of Pentacles. So, oh God. Um, sorry, distracted. So our clarifying, I like to clarify my cards with a pyramid uh, to focal, focus all the energy up into a, a pentacle. Um, the base level is the sun, the strength, and the throat chakra. This is about absolute joy and happiness and having the strength to speak your truth, right? Throat chakra, speaking your truth, power, or the strength card, which is having strength and endurance, which in the initial pull was reversed, so this lunar cycle seems to be about helping you to overcome and have the strength to speak your truth in regards to this, in regards to your own actual happiness. The next tier up is the Ace of Wands, which in this deck is called Passion Ignited, with Lovers, which in this deck is called Harmony, and it shows kind of passion and two people getting together. And then the one on top is Recognition and Reward. It's a three of pentacles, which is, it's a card that I really, really like. And this particular deck, it shows kind of like the heavens shining down on you as you bow, like you did it, like you accomplished it. Like this is this long, arduous process you've been going through to get to the point to be able to speak your truth in regards to this matter. And um, and uh, this lunar cycle is helping you, to, to it's pushing you. Whatever's happening in your life right now, whatever it is that you're um, being guided to your intuition, like I mentioned before, you have this intuition that's inside you. You're being asked to look at it about this choice that you have and you're being asked to make this choice and have the strength to speak your truth. Whatever's happening in your life is the universe kind of orchestrating and pushing you. Maybe it's uncomfortable. There is a tower in reverse. So there may be a dramatic event that maybe you knew was coming, or for some of you, maybe you didn't, but it's a dramatic collapse or a dramatic explosion in some area of your life that is going to lend you to clarity, to give you the understanding that you need to be able to have the strength to speak your truth. I'm going to start uh, grabbing some oracle cards to further... Um, okay, one of these isn't even up right. Am I crazy? I'll just see it. Alright, whatever. Um, I'm gonna grab some Oracle cards to give us some more messages and guidance um, for you and moving forward. Uh, a little worried I'm gonna spill my water. 
And then after this, I will read the card that you chose, which I haven't actually read yet. Um, blue Moon, Believe in the Impossible. I think we just had the Blue Moon. August? August was the Blue Moon. So this is the first moon after the Blue Moon, actually. But it says Believe in the Impossible. So something that you think maybe is impossible is, and you're being asked by spirit, universe, guides, whatever you want to believe in, it's really matter to me, God, I don't care. <laughs> I didn't mean to be rough about that, but like, whatever you believe in is fine. You're being asked to believe in whatever it is you think is impossible. Um, you're also being asked to look at the big picture, and uh, communication is key, which we already know because we have the throat chakra here. Bring love into the situation, new moon and Aquarius, and the answers you need are coming, which again, this is like, it's confirmation about that collapse that's going to bring about the clarity. We have that being re-emphasized. Communication is being re-emphasized. Believing in the impossible and um, bringing love in the situation, which is already kind of uh, here on account of the Passion United. We have lovers twice and the Two of Cups. So this is definitely for, I think, the vast majority of you. This is a love reading. And um, it's a love reading that's been long awaited and anticipated by you. Let's grab some more oracle cards. This is the, what's called the Priest of Light deck. I haven't actually used this in a reading before, except for, I've used it myself a couple of times just to kind of test it out and see how I like it. This is the first time I'm actually using it for somebody else. We have Invocation, New Creations, which I do think, I mean, when the tower collapses, that's at the end of something old, which by default means the beginning of something new. We have the Ace of Swords and we have the Ace of Wands. These are both new beginnings. We have the Two of Cups, which is new love. Um, so yeah, we have the, the, the confirmation from Spirit that there are new creations being happened happening and that they're divinely guided. Um, power overcoming, power over difficulty, reclaiming your power. I do think it's a lot of like the Leo card of the Leo card. The strength card in this deck is actually called, I'm still doing my words, I don't know why. It's super weird actually. The Leo card in this deck is called power. The Leo card, the sun card, no. Fuck, dude. Mm. The strength card in this deck is actually called Power, which is ruled by Leo, which is ruled by the Sun, which is also right next to it. By the way, my brain's getting confused, but this deck is called Overcoming, or Power Over Difficulty, which we talked about having the strength to overcome what it is that you haven't had the strength to, which is, I think, speaking your truth. And this one is Hidden Knowledge, and again, this is just more confirmation to me about the collapse of something, bringing about new knowledge you didn't previously have. Um, Akashic records and silent understanding. Yeah, I really think like when I look at this card and when I look at this pile, I feel that hermit card, that like solemn, not in a sad way, but the solemn like, okay, this has gone on long enough. I understand. I'm ready to do this. I have the strength I need to overcome this and I can speak my truth. And it's just this sudden like something collapses and it's just kind of the last straw, but not like in a frustrating way, just almost like a, like a, all right, you know what? It's time like that's the vibe that I get that says silent understanding like you just get it and then you're like ready to do it like you're just ready to fucking <laughs> go all in you know what I mean I'm gonna grab just a couple more cards before I move on to this one I want to grab ooh, okay I want to grab I guess a star seed card and I'm gonna grab you like one message from the universe card and then we'll read your thing all right um this one is Whale and Orca Elders, and it says, share your song, frequency of sound, and diving deep. Again, share your song is share your voice, right? It's about speaking up. It's about being authentic and speaking what your truth is. And I think it's super important. I think it's more than anything else, this lunar cycle is for sure about you speaking your truth and being upfront and honest about uh, your feelings. And the Seven Star Sisters, Birthing Creations, Tapestry of Life, Expression. I find this card really like mesmerizing to look at. The Seven Star Sisters, Birthing Creations. That's the second one. This one is also called New Creations. 
yeah, you're being asked to create a whole new thing and you're being asked to look at the big picture. This is all going to come with so much happiness, like once you do it, but there is that initial collapse. There is that, um, there's that sadness you're trying to overcome for what you feel like you've lost. Um, but I don't think you really have to worry about it at all. It looks like you're just being, it's just, it's just pushing you. Whatever sadness and whatever travesty or whatever sad thing is happening to you is literally just to push you to the point of feeling like you have the strength and power to speak up and create something new. You're being asked to do something with creation. And the message from the universe before I read your big one is... True healing occurs when I give myself permission to feel whatever feelings live below the triggers. And your the card you chose from the Levant Beyond Lumeria deck, it's a relatively long, um, it's a relatively long, fuck. I don't know why I'm so like word jumbled with you in this pile. I'm not usually so jumbled. That being said, life force energy. Revel in the bliss of being alive. This card is packed with luminous life force energy for optimal health and healing. As much as is possible, seek joy and upliftment in everything you do. Consider the foods you eat, the environments you spend time in, the people in your life, and what you wear. Increase your awareness of how things come to be in your world and their energetic resonance. You may be inspired to work with healing energies, with the land, perhaps to grow vegetables. You are encouraged to joyously make your life a piece of Eden. As a result, you will shine with vitality. Seek happiness, seek joy, seek fulfillment, seek these things. And that's going to lead you to the happiness that you're looking for. Now, if this reading resonated with you really strongly and you're like, bitch, that's my life right now, then there is going to be an extension and it will be over on my Patreon, I think you have to have, I don't think, I know, you have to be either the Atlantean or Lemurian tier, which is $10 a month or $15 a month, I believe it is, uh, to get that extra additional content. Um, and uh, so if you want to do that, that's where it is. Links below for all those things. Uh, if you are content where you're at, then I will see you in the next video and have a wonderful noon. You chose pile number two, and this is going to be your reading. All right, pile two. Your reading seems to, I mean, my initial initial impression around the gate is that your reading pertains in large part to your ability to uh, hold the frequency of abundance, manifest money. This is about where you're going with like your career, finances, this is about, this is, it feels very much like a spiritual evolution kind of group. Um, but it also, it's very pertaining to money, but it's, it's like a, it's like a esoteric vibe is how it feels. It feels very much like, um, this is about your ability to create, create, that's it. Full stop, full sentence, create. And money, it's, 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 uh. To draw it in, to hold that vibration, to, to see what that is, to explore that. That's what you're learning, I think, largely. Um, so, you have, you've been honing, oh, okay. Uh, this is the first card that came out on pile one, actually, too, which is weird. But um, you have the eight of, eight of Pentacles clarified by the Ace of Pentacles, and then we have the Moon clarified by the High Priestess and the Magician. Uh, the Ten of Pentacles in reverse clarified by the Five of Swords. Eight of Swords by the Wands. So, how I would interpret this is you're dedicating your effort to creating something, to creating um, a lifestyle is the word that I'm hearing that that you're seeking, and that uh, you're trying to figure out how to do that. And you've been working really diligently towards it, and your work is going to be rewarded very, very soon, uh, potentially in this lunar cycle, which is what the reading is for. The universe is going to offer you the opportunity and hand you um, a new path, a new route to leverage. It's like it's like the way that it, like the way that the image that I'm like seeing is that 
it's like you've got you've been working towards building the skill set over to like you've been doing it over and over and over again like you make you make one you put it up on the wall you do it again put it up you do another one and you put it up and then you're being given the opportunity to combine those together into one big one big coin to kind of like do it bigger do it better if that makes sense that's what it feels like it's like you're being given the like good job you're graduating to the next level you then have the moon, which is being clarified by the high priestess and the magician. So the moon is often, one of the interpretations that I like to use for the moon, which is what I'm going to use primarily, but not entirely in this particular reading, is that when you are guided by moonlight, you cannot see the entire landscape. When, you, when you're walking you know, in sunlight, you can see everything, but by moonlight, you can only see so far in front of you. And when you're being guided, kind of by spirit, um, by the moon, by spirit, you're being given just enough information to take the next couple of steps. And you have to trust that what you're heading towards is where you want to be going because you can't really see all the way down the road. It's like a test of faith almost. That's largely how I've experienced the moon card and it's influenced my life. It is additionally about the things that lurk in the shadows. Um, and the things that, like in your own shadow, like shadow work, you know, your um, your own blocks that you're unaware of, that kind of thing. This is being clarified by the high priestess and the magician. Card number one and number two, right? So the magician is about physical reality. It's about taking the four elements, combining them together alchemically to create your reality. It's also reminiscent um, if you look at the way the magician stands he has one hand up and one hand pointed down it's the as above so below ideology that's what the magician is learning as above so below is also as within so without your internal world is a reflection of your external reality in in you're learning this intuitively that's the high priestess the high priestess is is um is the embodiment of intuition and knowing without having to do or read it's the pure knowingness right you are being guided through your intuition to understand that the reality within you is going to be the reality that's reflected externally around you so if you uh, are having physical issues it has to do with a block the moon within you and you're being guided step by step to unclear that. There does seem to be that that is what you're working towards. If you would like to create this new financial situation, um, you have the 10 of pentacles in reverse being clarified by the five of swords here. And then we have the eight of swords with that five of wands. Now both the five of swords and the five of wands are about conflict. Um, however, the, the five of swords is a bit more mischievous whereas the five of wands is kind of everyone um like this guy's living away wounded and this guy's got three swords like this guy ends up hurting others and he ends up on top that kind of thing whereas the five of pen the five of wands is like everyone all out conflict across the board right so there is conflict and those conflicts seem to be in related to first of all generational wealth and or historical ties so the shadow or that you may need to be dealing with may have to do with your uh like your family's like programming and potentially even your dna like maybe you grew up without money and that conditioned you to to, to see the world and that way you don't know how to see the world with money it may have to do with your lineage with the way you're raised with the beliefs your parents you know, if they were always yelling, like, money doesn't grow on trees, like, we, you know, you can't just make money happen. Like, if that was something that was said to you a lot right now, um, that this could be creating a lot of damage internally uh, within you in regards to your ability to create. Additionally, there's so much conflict within you. This Five of Wands is clarifying the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is about feeling like, or believing that you're trapped, feeling, believing that you're imprisoned, but in fact you're not. If you look at the Eight of of swords uh, on the artwork it's this guy who's kind of he's really loosely bound with a blindfold on he's standing in water and he's surrounded mostly but not entirely by swords he thinks that this is an prison he thinks he's standing in like a lake surrounded by metal bars but he's not and if he just put a little effort in he could free himself 
just freeing yourself from the, in the in, internal conflict within you in regards to finances, in regards to what you think is happening, um, or how you think the world functions, I should say. Um, I'm going to clarify these. At the bottom of your deck is a Knight of Wands. This is about rapid. The, the Knight of Wands, Wands are fire, so it's really fast moving. Knight is messenger. Uh, so this could very well be about the sudden onset of understanding or messages that you receive that help you understand this further. Um, yeah, let me get let me finish pulling these. I like to pull my clarifiers in a pyramid, and that kind of gives me a focal point. This is uh, almost entirely major Arcana cards, by the way. Yeah, so, okay, we have, and this deck is called Universe Truth, Suffering and Silence, Light Transformation, Partnerships and Alliances. But these cards are, in essence, uh, the world, judgment, the nine of swords, the sun, death, and the three of wands. Now, um, so it's a pyramid, right? Our base is the world, judgment, and suffering and silence. The world is about the completion of a big cycle, right? And um, judgment is kind of like, um, it has a lot to do with divine influence and, and their balancing of the scales and kind of where you're at in your journey is how it feels in this particular um, reading. And then we have the nine of swords, which is Kind of that nightmare restlessness, and that's going over our eight of swords and our comp and our our five of wands. So it's showing me that there's so much conflict and darkness and suffering inside of you in regards to your feelings, beliefs, and experiences as they re pertain to this, um, and you're being asked to let them die. You have the death card, which is called transformation. The the universe is pushing you to try to kill off these ideals of yours. Um, we also have the light here sitting over the world and judgment, showing that the, the and this is sitting over the moon, by the way, and the high priestess and the magician. This is such a powerhouse of cards right here, showing me that the entire universe is conspiring to shine light on onto this this area for you so that you can move forward with it. Like you're, it's, it's really very like divinely guided. And the card at the top of the pyramid is the Three of Wands, which in this thing is called Partnerships and Alliances. This is about considering the possibility that perhaps this isn't something you should do alone. Perhaps there is a partnership that could assist you in this project. It also has to do with, um, wait, is this Wands or Swords? No, that's Wands. Yeah. It has to do with, um, like, going out in the world and, and, sh and showing off your accomplishments and what, what you've gotten done. And I think that that's what's coming for you. Um, your This lunar cycle for you is largely about your beliefs as regards to the creation of abundance and your really true fundamental understanding of how your inner world is being reflected on your external reality. Everything that you experience in your external world is really just a reflection of what's happening within you internally. And if you would like to shift your external reality, what you have to do is change your internal belief structure. And this lunar cycle is, is pushing you towards understanding that. It wants you to see that firsthand so that you can really fully fundamentally understand it in its core and in, in its essence. I'm going to grab you some oracle cards to start clarifying before we get into your... Um, the card that you actually chose, the Beyond the Marion card. Ooh. Flow. Find an easier path forward. Surrender the outcome and release your expectations. That has a lot to do with manifestation and creation of money. When you, there's, I'm going to go on a whole side tangent here, but um, if you closely follow law of attraction enthusiasts and teachers on the internet, they will um, basically tell you to be very, very specific all the time and um, that you have to focus on what you want 
and say it all the time and put it on the wall and be very like very specific and this is what you want you want exactly this but the problem with that is is that when you when you focus your intentions on exactly this or exactly that and the universe has something else that's more better aligned for you mo better that's what i said when it's more better aligned for you or something that fits more easily um if you are not open to that because you're close to anything that isn't this one specific thing that you're looking at then you're closing yourself off to a potential blessing this same flow find an easier path forward surrender the outcome release your expectation that is a key component to actually manifesting and bringing about and allowing blessings in it's about not having those very specific expectations as others would have you believe it's about being open to whatever blessings the universe may have because when you're open to that you're open to receiving that that it gives the space for the things that you haven't even thought about receiving yet or makes a space for things to come into you more easily you have to allow yourself to go with it that's part of what you need to understand support ask for help get more rest and nurture yourself again it's about that partnership and alliance maybe maybe you're being too stubborn about how you have to do it all by yourself maybe you're burning yourself out and you need to um, ask a bit that nine of swords card we have over here can often be indicative of sleeplessness and a lack of rest um, also we have those two conflicting cards a five of swords and the five of wands which is also about conflict and and fighting and that can be very exhausting it's it's a calling for you to, to rest a little bit passion do what excites you get vital about your life increase your energy levels again when you want to create something what's going to most easily um, magnetize towards your vibration, towards your energy, and be able to manifest easier for you is going to be the things that are in alignment with you. The things that are in alignment with you are going to be the things that really excite you. If you are like, oh, I'm going to get trained to do this thing because I can make a lot of money really fast, but that thing doesn't actually make you happy, it doesn't excite you, and you don't actually really want to do it, you're just trying to make money, it's not going to flow very easy. It's not going to flow very effectively. It's not going to get where you want to go, and eventually it's going to burn you out. This is saying to focus your energy on the things that do make you happy and do excite you because those are going to be the things that are going to put your vibration in the area where you can receive more easily. Okay. And then we have discernment. All is not what it seems. Stay true to your knowing and keep your dreams a secret. You may also need to learn that outside influences can dramatically affect your own manifestations and creations. If you're like, I'm going to do this thing, you tell everybody. But all these people don't really want you to succeed in that, which you'd be surprised at how many fucking people you know that don't actually want you to succeed. They may have counter intentions. They don't want you to succeed more than they do. Maybe they're jealous. Maybe they're whatever. Maybe they, whatever the thing is. Now, everything in our reality is a co-creation. You aren't the one creating everything. Everyone around you is also creating. So if you put your intentions out, you verbalize them to all these people and they don't, they don't hold that vibration. They don't hold that truth for you. They don't want that for you. Now you have a co-creation situation where your co-creators are not on the same team as you. And that can also dampen your ability to manifest. I don't know why you're reading it straight into a whole lecture about alignment and creation and manifestation, but that's what's happening. Just want to go with it. I'm going to grab you a couple more cards and I'm going to read you your Beyond Lemuria. If this reading is um, really resonating with you strongly, there will be an extension on it on Patreon. You have to be at least an Atlantean member or if not a Lemuria member to see it. If you're new here, my camera only records 20 minutes at a time, so my alarm goes off after that and I have to get up and reset it. Um, I'm gonna grab you a couple of Oracle cards and then I'm going to film the extension, which will be available exclusively to Patreon members who are at least Atlantean, if not Lumerian. Maybe, there he goes. Um, my capacity to tune into the energy of love gives me the words I need when I'm ready to speak up, the compassion I need when it's time to forgive, and the power I need when I am lost. The key to that is my capacity to tune into the energy of love. The energy of love is the highest frequency you can hold, and holding that high frequency puts you in a place to more readily and easily be accessed by the powers of the universe to receive your blessings. So understanding how to shift your energy and vibration in order to receive is going to be key for your learning in this cycle. That's what I'm understanding from that anyways. <clears throat> okay. 
Uh, activated Earth. Power places ley lines. Trust where you're led. And big picture thinking. Pleiades energy, visionary, inspired ideas. Again, that comes back to doing what you're passionate about and following the signs. This is this whole reading is about alignment. You're on a very important journey right now about understanding alignment, what it means. Which, by the way, I'm going to be making a uh, course for in the very near future. Alignment is something I'm very passionate about. Um, I have a lot to say about it, so I'm going to make a whole course about it in the, probably October, October, November. And that being said, anyways, this is a lot about that. So this is trust where you're being led, um, power places, ley lines, blah, blah, blah. This is about going where the energy feels good and allowing the universe to guide you. Because again, if you're following a lot of manifestation, love, attraction, enthusiasts, and teachers, they're going to tell you that you're in control of all things. And it's true, you're very powerful, but the fact of the matter is you are not like everything. I mean, we're a part of everything. We are all one, yes, but while well, you exist here, this is... Uh, this is such I can give you such a long lecture right now I'm trying to figure out how to shorten it and I feel so inspired to like lecture you right now if you if you allow the universe to lead you and understand that there are forces of consciousness which are existing in a frequency which you cannot hold while you are here in a physical body and you allow those forces to lead you and guide you. And you allow those forces to inspire you, which they will. But give you these ideas and they're wild and you feel very inspired and passionate about them. And they lead you to places and people. You allow it to happen and you take those as signs and you follow those. They will lead you to a place that will bring you more happiness than you would have created on your own if you were just following your very specific the you know dream board, vision board that you had. Allowing the universe to inspire you and say that, hey, we actually have a something else in my view we think you'll like it even more and being open to that can bring you more than your very niche understanding will the card that you picked at the beginning is called i actually haven't read it yet so this is exciting for me too the infinite as lemurians were only partially incarnated their bodies were much lighter less physically actualized and less affected by aging they were also aware of their infinite nature this card of rebirth can appear after challenges that have required a level of surrender you have arrived at a beginning. Revel in your newfound inner freedom. Blockages have fallen away and there are opportunities to step into. Stretch your wings and arise like a phoenix, born anew, ready for a new cycle of growth. Celebrate, honor the road that brought you here and prepare to take flight with the tools you have gathered through your elevation process. This seems like a good summary for the things I'm talking about, honestly. It talks about the freedom and... Um, rebirth and the blockages falling away and understanding i mean this is good this is a really good card about um i'm like half reading half speaking sorry blah 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 this is a really important challenge that's really going to allow you to level up in a way that changes your entire frequency and allows you to create a much more enjoyable free abundant life for yourself this is a really important lunar cycle for you i i fully believe that um, if you appreciate this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, comment, uh, anything like that. There's a link in the description box for all kinds of stuff. Uh, you helping me to, by doing that is really appreciated. If you resonate with this really strongly and you want more on this particular pile, this particular reading, there's going to be an extended version on my Patreon. Um, on the level of Atlantean and Lemurian has access to all extended videos so you can go check that out link below as well other than that have a wonderful new moon and I will see you in the next video bye all right pile three if you chose this card this is going to be your reading all right pile three I'm gonna be honest your pile's kind of heavy it feels heavy I was I was really hoping for like a light fun pile <laughs> Yeah, that's not what happened. Um, Alright, so the first card that came out is the Nine of Swords, which is sleeplessness and insomnia and worry and troubles and like, ah, oh, that kind of thing, right? And it seems to be pertaining around, um, I mean, for a lot of you, I think you're concerned about a very specific person, somebody who entered your life very suddenly and abruptly, and you're not sure if you can trust them or not. Um, but I, in general, I think most of you, it's about... <sighs> Actually, that might be most of you. But the rest of you, 
it's it seems like it's about it's people it's a lot of people a lot of people and not knowing who to trust and also just it's like you have too many problems to deal with it's like you have so many problems and you don't know where to start um there seems to be like a missed opportunity or or something along those lines in regards to uh, new abundance a new opportunity for financial or you know baseline matters like perhaps you thought you were gonna get a new job and you didn't get the job or you tried to venture that didn't work out whatever the thing is there's a bunch of delays there's just delays and blockages regarding in in these areas of your life regarding um, your your mentality like how you're thinking and also your your money your home environment uh, delays and blockages seem to be the thing um, and it's causing you a lot of worry and a lot of fatigue um, as a general rule of thumb I think there is guidance to be had um, there's a mentor there's a teacher there's somebody who can help you um, who will help you and who you should seek out it's probably somebody in your immediate circle potentially even a family member um, that's not normally how I would ever, ever in my life have I ever read a Ten of Pentacles clarified by a Hierophant. But it, I'm looking at it and it just feels like there is a Hierophant in your family that can help you and guide you and lead you. Um, and maybe you should seek them out. There's, there's, there's learning that needs to be done regardless. Even if that's not the case, if there's not somebody in your immediate family or immediate environment to help teach you, then if you're not in that group of people, minimum... There is teaching, learning that needs to be done. Um, and it's in regards to your immediate home and environment. You may even be somebody who's being asked, like I, the, the hesitation was that I suddenly have this, like some people need to teach their own family. Um, there may be a small subject of you who are being asked to teach, but I think for the most part, um, there's learning that needs to be done. There's higher learning, higher understandings in regards to the foundations of your life and how they operate. Um, there is an incoming, by the, end of the, by the end of the lunar cycle, you have this incoming new profound passion that will be ignited within you, that will spark um, passion and excitement towards a new endeavor that you may set out to do. There may even be travel involved. Um, I think you're currently in this kind of darkened place, this kind of um, waiting zone, this transformational period, like a butterfly in its little cocoon, like you're not quite done yet, um, but you're working on it. There, You're in the pit, you're in the pit of transformation, I would say, um, and you're really just worried and stressed out about these things, but before this little cycle is over, you're going to have a new profound inspiration. Um, and help arriving to give you a new venture to go on that I think is going to turn things upside down or turn things upside right for you. Uh, I'm going to clarify. I like to clarify my cards with a with a pyramid. Um, just going to do that real quick. This is the John Holland Psychic Tarot Oracle. It's my favorite clarifying deck, honestly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of delays. It's, just, it's very delayed. So we have, um, the waiting game, which is the two of wands, light, which is the sun, uh, patience, which is temperance, emotional loss, which is the five of cups, prosperity begins, which is the ace of um, pentacles, and then we have spiritual strength, which is the nine of wands. Now, we have the ace of pentacles originally, and it was reversed, showing me this kind of opportunity. I think this opportunity is coming back around again. Again, by the end of the month, we have a new opportunity coming. This first card, the waiting game, again, it's sitting over those same, the chariot reverse, which is a delay. This is all delayed. You have a delay happening. It's like somebody stole away. That's another thing I just suddenly, this seven of swords reversed over the knight of swords. It's like somebody, there was this rapid opportunity approaching and somebody stole it away. 
and uh, that's you're waiting now. There's a bit of a loss that happened there, but there is a light approaching, and it's gonna if you if you're patient, and it's gonna give you a new opportunity again for prosperity. But you're being asked um, to hold tight. They're testing your strength more or less, right? Can you learn the lessons that's being taught to you under under duress more or less? If that makes sense. Um, but I do think as, as heavy as this is right now, there is an opportunity coming. Stash down. No. Dog, sorry. Um, there's an opportunity approaching very, very rapidly. I'm going to start getting some oracle cards out to get guidance and advice. See what, uh, see what advice we can get for you. It's a void of course moon card and it says nothing will come of this situation. Ugh. It's like you're in the darkness. That's just what I keep thinking. It's like this is the void of course moon. I just feel like you're just currently in the dark. But like we have the sun card here. You can't have the sun card in any placement anywhere in a reading and there not be good approaching. That's a, a default. Um, this one is the fixed moon. It says hold your vision. Again, it's that same spiritual strength. Can you can you maintain under duress? Uh, a fiery climax approaches. And last one here is a time to give rather than take. Um, I'm gonna grab some unicorns. Hold on, I'm just more. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna dig into these just a second. Hold on. Ooh. Mm. Friendship, prosperity, action. Ooh. Ouch. Okay. Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> All right. So we had it. Nothing will come of this card. Hold your vision. Fire climax to give rather than take right so again it's this idea that you're in the dark you're under duress you're being tested there is light approaching right you have to hold tight mm. then we have what if we had what was first this one came out prosperity was next when they came out it says a gift of money is on its way your income is increasing manage your finances with love learn the frequency of love and how to use it in your life including your finances that being said, it's it's that same. We have that Ace of Pentacles twice plus an Ace of Wands. You've got three Aces. There's no way you don't have new opportunities coming. That's a default. You absolutely do. It's just hard for you to see them right now. Friendship. Seek out your soul family. Surround yourself with positive people. Spend more time socializing. With that Nine of Swords being the first card that came out, I would say there's probably a good chance you're isolating. You are tired. You're not... You're in a dark place. It's time for you to shift your energy. A quick way to do that is to go out and connect with people. Laugh. Try to have a good time. Try to shift your energy a bit. We have action. Now is the perfect time to act. Take inspired action towards your dreams. Move forward with confidence. So we have that ace. Remember I told you before there's a new inspiration coming. Um, there's that, that Ace of Wands being clarified by the Three of Wands. I do think that by the end of the lunar cycle, you will have a new inspiration. When you get that inspiration, it says take inspired action. Don't just do shit out of desperation. Don't just be like, I'm just going to do this because I fucking need to da 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 No, fuck that. Absolutely not. That's not going to get you anywhere. You need to take inspired action. Like, oh my God, I want to do this. I'm excited about this thing. You need to take inspired action. Allow the inspiration to come to you. Go out, socialize, connect to people. Maybe that's where the opportunity will come from. Maybe this is the cards telling you to go out and socialize so that you can receive this new opportunity. And then when you're inspired, immediately take action. Um, and then we have growth, plant. Again, yeah, this is a growth period. When you're, you know, they say when you plant a seed, you plant a seed in the dark underground, right? And then it sprouts up. Like, life is not born in the light. It is born in the dark. You are in the dark because you are growing. You also have passion, the soul, waiting for passion. You're learning what passion is. And you need to wait for passion to show up. 
and then comfort. It's about choosing between your comfort and what will actually push you to grow. You need to learn to be pushed to grow. I'm going to grab one of these, and I'm going to read the card that you chose in the beginning. This is the Universe Has Your Back deck. Um, and I think of them as like notes from your guides or your higher self. They're just words on a card. I guess you got three. When I lean on certainty and faith, I change my mind about the world I see. I surrender to a power greater than me, and I honor how I want to feel. When you are stuck in that darkness, like that Nine of Swords energy, and you get stuck there and you sit and you stew in it, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not shifting anything. You have to have faith that things are working out and you have to surrender to the positive outcome that you know is coming. I'm telling you right now, this is your confirmation. You have this beautiful new opportunity coming to you that's going to bring you about passion inspiration. Take this thing I'm telling you and allow it to be the faith that you lean on. Allow it to be your truth and then shift your energy. Go socialize and honor how you want to feel. However you want to feel, start trying to feel that right now. Let's see what card you got, what you chose. She of the Lotus. If there is a way to fast track growth, it is by being real with the shadowy or unloved parts of ourselves. Shadows can be painful or tender to touch. Sensitivity can be a trigger that shows us where we might want to spring clean some of our darker, forgotten, ignored, or hidden corners. Accepting our shadows is the first stage in restoring ourselves to wholeness in self-love. Peel back the layers where there is shame, guilt, or fear, and then bring them into the daylight. Under a loving and compassionate light, they will resolve and reassimilate, reminding us that on the flip side of the coin, these are our superpowers. So it sounds like the shadow that you're sitting in may be some of your own shadows that you are being asked to deal with and work on. If you are new to shadow work, I have several videos on it. Google the internet. I don't care where you're from. This is not a self-promotional thing. If you do the shadow work to heal yourself, then you heal the collective and we all heal together. So I want you to do it however you want to do it. I don't really care how you do it, but look into it. The darkness you're sitting in may be of your own creation and it's time for you to figure out how you got there so you can shift your own perspective about it. That being said, if this resonated with you strongly and you would like me to dive deeper into it, there will be an extension on this reading available on my Patreon. Um, the Atlantean and Lemurian tier have access to extended videos. Otherwise, if this is where we leave off, any likes, comments, subscriptions, or any interactions you have with the video content will help me tremendously with the algorithm, and I thank you for it. And regardless, I hope you have a wonderful new moon. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.